Hey, welcome back to the Midday q and I'm your host, the Duck Man. We're back today with my Volkswagen bus. This is an early split window bus, if you haven't already noticed that. But we got a lot of questions yesterday when I started working on the uh, upgraded rear suspension and where I started to narrow the rear end of the bus. And one of the big questions I was asked is, you know, why would you do that? And I did, when I edited the video, I did notice that I wasn't exactly clear on what my intent was or what I was going for. And I kind of explained it towards the end of the video. Not everybody's going to watch it all the way. You know, what can you ask for? But <laughs> at the end of the video, I did measure, you know, with a straight edge along the side of the bus to um, how far the hub was from the outside of the bus. And what my main intent was, what my main goal was, is to push the hubs inside to the bus closer. So that way my wheels, which are... Well, that's a surprise. You guys are going to see that probably later this week, maybe early next, somewhere in there. But my wheels that I'm fitting on there are going to be pushed outwards due to the upgrade to the IRS rear suspension. Now, when you upgrade to your IRS rear suspension, it pushes your wheels out. And I forget what the measurement is. Let's say roughly an inch. It's going to push the wheels out. So even if you had stock wheels on there, they're going to start getting close to the inside of the fenders. So if you're trying to put a fat tire on or something that's going to give you a little more grip, well, you're going to have problems. Things are just not going to look right. And my second problem, this is the big one, is I plan to add a Porsche brake set to the back, and that's going to push them out even further. So roughly, they're going to be shoved out something like two inches, you know, inch and a half, inch and three quarter, two, two inches, something up to approximately that. So what I did was I narrowed the rear end about an inch and a half, and I measured to the inside of the hub against the outside of the bus. And when I did that math, it turns out that I was like one and five eighths inches further inward. So it should give me enough space. Now I did some measurements with the uh, 205 size tire that I plan to put on the back, and I discovered that I only gained an eighth of an inch on either side. Now that is so small of an amount that, well, when you look at the bus, you're probably not even going to notice it. And as far as the inside of the fenders are concerned, they're not going to get rubbed by it or anything like that. In addition, upgrading to a IRS rear suspension. And let me clarify what IRS is. And I probably should have done this in the beginning of the video. Well, in this case, it's for handling reasons. If you have a swing axle, and, and they work, they really do work. Having driven one a lot on Ruby, uh, I do feel the differences uh, compared to anything else that has standard trailing arms because those wheels, they do this whenever you go over bumps. When you corner, it has a tendency to go this way. The car will ride up on it and push that wheel out. So the road is this way. So it doesn't take you know any genius to see that if you're pushing a wheel this way, it's not going to grip. This way it will, but this way it will not. So the vehicle will have more of a tendency to want to spin around. And when it comes to something like a bus, they don't spin, they flip. <laughs> so because they're, they're as tall as they are, they're as top heavy, yeah, the thing is, um, it's a little bit of a hazard. And most people drive them and they don't flip them. You know, it's not like they just flip over as soon as you sneeze next to one of them. But in the case of me, you've seen me drive. You know how I am when I get behind the wheel. I push it a little harder and I like to get around the corners. I like to keep my momentum up and I like to keep moving. So I would like to get the bus in a better position where it will handle a little better and much safer than it would otherwise. And that's the reason why I'm upgrading to an IRS. Now after that, people said, hey, are you doing it just to put beetle parts on the back of your bus? And the answer is no, they don't necessarily have to be beetle parts. Mary has a whole backyard full of late model uh, bus parts and I could easily make the adapters and everything else to put the bus uh, trailing arms and the bus brakes and all that stuff on here also. But I had an overabundance of beetle parts here in this yard. So it's just 
makes more sense for me to use what I've got and make it work on this vehicle. In addition to that, I have so many brake parts left over from when I was preparing Eleanor that I was trying all kinds of different configurations. I was comparing weights, measurements, distance between this and that. There's a lot of information online about it, but it's so scattered and so few and far between that people don't answer this question and this question, and you have to put those questions together to give you the exact answer that you're looking for. So I, I, I didn't find what I needed to start searching around online. So I ordered a whole bunch of parts and I got a lot of them pretty reasonably up on eBay. So I'm recycling some of the stuff on this that I hadn't used. I mean, it's a few hundred dollars worth of stuff. It makes sense just to use it, right? So <laughs> that's what we're doing here. Now, some people mentioned the middle of the torsion tube that's in the back of the bus. Right in the center is where those torsion bars, they engage. And the center is much larger diameter with more teeth in it than you'd find on a beetle. And that stops me from using beetle torsion bars. Now, I did mention in the last video that I could cut that section out and I could weld in the old section that came in at Eleanor and put in some really heavy racing style or dune buggy off-road style torsion bars in there that should be able to make this bus work the way I wanted it to. And then on the outsides, I could just use beetle spring plates and be done with it. No more cutting, no more weird modifications or all the other crap that goes with it. In that case, everything that goes on this bus is, you know, stock or just purchased from the store without having to do a whole lot of different welding. But I really don't want to do that. I really don't. I was asked also if I, the middle of the torsion tube, if I would put in the adjusters. If you remember, in Eleanor has those nice adjusters where I could turn a bolt on the bottom of the beetle and raise and lower the suspension. And it's something I've thought about on this bus also, but I have not found one for the bus torsion bars to engage into. There's plenty for beetle. And again, I could do the beetle method and I could do the heavy heavy duty uh, beetle torsion bars and make everything work that way. But again, it's not something that I want to do. I want to put the bus back to having the torsion bars that it either had or ones that are a little bit bigger than that, maybe from a later, mo later model bus. And I've considered going to Mary's once again and getting some of the heavier torsion bars that they have out of there and the spring plates and making them work on here. And that's still up in the air. That still might happen. Or I might just take everything that I have do a little cutting, welding, modifying, and be done with it. I can also just use what I've got and not have to go over there and try to yank out another stuck torsion bar that's been sitting in her yard for 20 years. That was not fun, but I certainly did get the job done. And once I got those torsion bars out, I was able to examine them. I did manage to find some online for sale. They're a little spendy. They're about a hundred bucks a pop. I didn't want to drop another $200 into the rear suspension on this, but in order to get these stock torsion bars back to the way that they were, that's what it's going to run me, so I'll probably have to get into that. Now, as far as the Porsche brakes and what models each one of those pieces are, I got asked that as well. People wanted the copycat what I'm doing here because it looks pretty simple. I mean, again, I demonstrated it and showed it's not hard. It's not work I've done before, but I've done things like it before in other vehicles. So I will reveal that probably down the road. Once I get a combination that I know works, I have to put a whole bunch of different parts together and I have an idea in my head and while laying it on the bench, most of the stuff looked like it's going to work. But when I actually put it into the real world and attach it to the bus, is everything going to fit properly? And I think it will, but I'll give a parts list and a build list when, when I finally get through that and see how it goes. But but um, yeah, that was the bus, and as you saw from during this video, um, the rear suspension on it has been getting upgraded to have beetle trailing arms on it to give a proper IRS suspension. Now, what is IRS versus swing arm? Well, swing arms, the the uh, wheels do this when you go over bumps. You know, they just naturally move that way. I can feel this when I'm driving in the fastback. It's a weird sensation. It, the thing, you, it's, it feels like you're being pinched and squeezed again and pinched and squeezed. It's odd. You can actually feel it. It's subtle, but you can feel it. The suspension will actually sit a little high or it'll sit a little low as the wheels finally settle to where they're supposed to be. Now, some people say, oh, you know, your shock absorbers are bad. No, it's got good shock absorbers. In fact, they even changed them at some point. But comparing that to driving an IRS, it's just a completely different animal. IRS suspension, they pretty much just go straight up and down. They will camber in just a little bit, and that's natural. You do want a wheel to slightly camber in when you're in that turn and the outside wheel it'll camber in a little bit again so that way it'll dig into the pavement versus this crap you don't want that <laughs> so the camber is actually designed to help steer the vehicle yes the rear wheels will steer steer the vehicle when you get into it because that wheel will actually come up it'll camber and at the same time your alignment will come in too that's right the alignment of the wheels will come in slightly when your suspension is compressed so a lot happens in those rear rear uh, wheels there's a lot going on back there a lot of people don't seem to think about 
But swing axle, nope, definitely not for me. The fastback will also be upgraded sometime this winter. I've got all the parts for that sorted out too. In fact, today I just picked up some new torsion bars for it. I got some heavier gauge ones that were uh, from a square back. Why did the square back get heavier ones? Well, because square back is intended for heavier payloads. So they had this idea that a family wagon versus in a square back, a little stiffer because it's going to be supporting more weight. Well, me, I like vehicles to feel a little more sporty. So I figured a set of square back um, torsion bars would work really nicely in the fastback. So that's something we'll be upgrading it to. By the way, they're the same, uh, same torsion bars that are in an early uh, 924 or 944 also. 23.5 millimeters or something, whereas the fastback ones are 22. So it's subtle, the difference is there, but it will be a little bit stiffer. And I think it'll give a nicer ride. It seems like that'll be the better sport way to do it. Well, um, licky likey, comment, subscribe, you guys. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. And don't forget to check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. You can also find links to my merch. That's right, the duck man's gotten birch. <laughs> you can find Skeeter's Facebook up there just the same. Skeeter's not with me right now. She's inside hanging out with Boomer. I just gave them dinner. I'm about to go to dinner tonight with Wild Bill. It's a buy one, get one free over at uh, one of the local burger joints. So uh, I'm going to treat him. So thanks, you guys, for watching. Once again, really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.